I'm Ruth Hunter Joss and I'm the Women's Network Representative on the Professional Development Committee. Uh, my name is Rosemary Howell. I'm an obstetrician and gynaecologist in Manchester um, and I've been the chair of the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists Professional Development Committee for the past few years. And the um, college provides a continuing professional development program for qualified um, obstetricians and gynaecologists. And what that includes is um, different courses, um, practical skills courses, um, educational and scientific meetings and conferences, as well as relevant resources that help doctors keep up to date on the latest recommendations, developments and legislation. Um, and really the aim of um, a continuing professional development programme is to help doctors um, maintain and build their skills over the course of their careers and um, the ultimate aim of that is to um, make sure that there's better patient care and ultimately better outcomes for women and their families. As Ruth said, it's obviously extremely important that doctors do keep up to date with their skills throughout their careers, which can be many years. Um, and the college supports this by providing a continuing professional development program. Our program has been rec quite recently updated, um, particularly uh, to support doctors in today's digital world of, of learning, um, with a lot more e-learning and a lot more access to a variety of resources. Um, and so our program is structured to encourage doctors, first of all, to think about what they actually want to learn. And what they want to learn is determined both by what they do in terms of their practice and the service and the service they deliver in the areas which they work in. It's also determined by, by as individuals, how they want to develop their careers. Um, <clears throat> Our careers are not necessarily straight lines and often include a variety of different areas of practice and different areas of specialism within the whole specialty of Bob's and Gani. And so it's important that doctors are supported to be able to do that as they go through their careers. Um, the program is very flexible so that doctors can um, determine what they want to learn and then look at different ways of achieving the learning. It's also important that it encourages um, aspects of learning around wider professional skills such as communication, breaking bad news, um, uh, that more holistic approach to practice. Um, of course the clinical aspects are extremely important, um, that you can practice clinically and you're always up to date in your clinical practice, but the program is very much structured to encourage a wider, a wider approach to the, the whole of women's healthcare rather than just focusing, focusing on very specific clinical aspects. So, Rosemary, can you explain a bit about what revalidation means and how the college supports people through yeah. that process? So, revalidation is a process within the UK. All um, specialists, uh, all doctors, in fact, have to demonstrate to the General Medical Council um, on a five yearly basis that they are fit to practice as doctors. Um, so, we, we complete our training, we are registered with the GMC to practice as a doctor, um, but every five years we have to go back to the GMC and provide evidence to say that we're still um, up to date and fit to practice. Um, continuing professional development is one aspect of that and it's a, a, a key aspect of it. We do it through a process of annual appraisal. Uh, so uh, once a year um, we uh, have an allocated appraiser, we discuss our um, practice with the appraiser, we show evidence to the appraiser of how we're keeping up to date and how we can show that we are practicing within the um, uh, required levels of um, competence and ability. Um, that appraisal feeds into a, a wider process is whereby um, uh, every five years, each one of those appraisals is, add, is added up, if you like, or taken into account. Um, and we have a responsible officer who is usually the um, in medical director of the hospital we work in, in the NHS, who, based on the evidence within the appraisals, makes a recommendation to the General Medical Council that we are able to be revalidated and therefore able to continue to practice. Thank you. Um, Ruth, you're involved on our committee um, as a lay 
representative um, from the RCOG's Women's um, Voices Network. Um, what do you think you bring to the process as a lay member? Um, well, I think that my role is around making sure that there's a service user perspective in the committee. Um, so I bring my own experience of accessing the relevant services, um, but also um, I think it's important that I don't just come with my own agenda, that I try not to come with my own agenda, and that we um, consider the breadth of perspectives of the range of people who are um, accessing relevant health services and meeting obstetricians and gynaecologists. Mm. And so I try to do that by linking to other work that the college is doing through um, what's being led by their public and patient involvement team. And also um, from what I learned from the Women's Voices Involvement Panel, which is a network of about 600 people who are um, involved with the college to help improve the college's work and also women's health care more widely. I think the college is extremely fortunate to be able to have that input into the committees. I mean, I know for me, speaking as a clinician within the committee, it's sometimes very easy that as doctors we get very bogged down in the technical, clinical, um, professional aspects of it. And although in our everyday practice and, and interaction with our patients, women and families, where I'm sure always engaged on that personal ba personal level, but sometimes when you get into committees that gets tends to get a bit lost um, in amongst the um, professional work that we're doing. And so I think it's really important that we continue to maintain that voice in this sort of work. Um, and particularly the diversity of voices that you're talking about that the Women's Network is able to bring to the, bring to the discussions. And we're very grateful that you're part of our committee. Thank you.